So I am outside of Home Depot right now. Home Depot, for those of you who live outside of North America, is a big home improvement store. So basically, uh, it's just a gigantic store. It's like a warehouse kind of thing. And inside, there's everything you would need to build or maintain or keep up a house. So wood, tools, all that kind of thing. I was in here yesterday, and I saw a stack of camping mattresses of three inch thick foam camping mattresses and they were selling for twenty dollars which um is a great deal like if it's a if it's a good foam mattress if it's a good foam pad if you sleep well on it twenty dollars is a great deal it's three inches thick by 30 inches wide by 72 inches or six feet long so great dimensions for uh, for a camping mattress. I would need to take a knife and trim it to make it a little bit more narrow. Instead of 30 inches, probably like 22 inches is, is what I would do. So I'd uh, take off about eight inches or so. Anyway, I was in here yesterday. I didn't buy it yesterday. I'm back today. I'm gonna buy it. I'll show it to you. They're also selling a cover to go over the mattress. That doesn't really interest me. Um, it's not very... the fabric isn't very nice. It's like kind of a rough Cordura canvasy kind of material and there's a big seam running down the middle of it that I don't like and so I think I'll probably just make my own mattress cover for it. Let's go into Home Depot and I will show you the stack of mattresses. Some are black and some are like a off-white kind of color. Uh, I don't know what the difference is. When I was here yesterday it looked like the off-white ones were a little bit higher quality foam but I didn't really spend that much time looking at them so Let's go in and I will show you uh, show you what we've got to work with here. Foam mattresses are just kind of out by their cash registers here. $20 for the pad and another $20 for the cover. But I don't think I'm gonna get the cover. So yeah, so they've got black ones here, nice thick foam. And then some uh, some white ones too. Okay, here it is. It was twenty-one dollars and forty cents, including tax. Uh, there might have been a little bit of a difference between the dark one and the lighter one. I think this one might be a little bit more firm, but who knows? Maybe that's just all in my head. And if it works well, if I go on a trip or two and I like it, then I will probably get one for my wife so that we both have nice, cushy, comfy mattresses to sleep on when we're camping in the car. Okay, I'm in Walmart. Here are the cheap sheets up here. A bunch of different colors to choose from. $4.97 for a flat twin. I'll go with this kind of creamy color. It's a few days later now, I'm in the house and ready to get to work on making this, uh, this foam mattress work for me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about why I'm doing this. So in the past I've used inflating, or more specifically self-inflating sleeping pads for camping. Uh, the first one I had was about three and a half inches thick and it was really nice, but then my wife's, at the time she was my girlfriend, her roommate's dog chewed it up and so that, uh, <laughs> didn't work for me anymore and so I bought one off of Amazon for like $30. It was about an inch and a half thick, that one was, and uh, it worked. But um, you know, there are some inherent shortcomings with air mattresses. One is that when you're driving between different elevations, it will expand or contract. So for example, um, if I camp um, one day at a high elevation, and then the next day I'm camping at a lower elevation, the pad will be very deflated and I'll have to reinflate it. And the same is true the other way around. If I camp in the morning at a low elevation and then camp in high elevation, the pad is very hard and so I need to adjust it. And that's not a huge deal, but uh, the bigger problem is that I never found them to be super reliable. Uh, the one that I've been using, the one and a half inch one, it leaks. And so I'll wake up in the morning uh, and sometimes I sleep on my side and so I'll wake up in the morning with a, with a numb shoulder and arm and so I've been thinking for a while now to go try an all foam mattress solution and seeing that one at Home Depot made me decide to give it a try. So anyway, here is the foam mattress. I'm going to put it on top of these bins.
Well, it's not pretty, but it worked. Definitely not the cleanest cut in the world, especially over here, but uh, I'll clean it up a little bit more. Uh, didn't go quite as smoothly as, as in the YouTube videos. I think that this is a slightly lower quality foam, which would explain the low price too, but uh, it doesn't cut super cleanly, but uh, you know, it's enough to, to get the job done. Okay, I spent a couple more minutes making it a little bit cleaner. I think that'll be, that'll be good enough for my purposes. Now what I'm gonna do is draw a line every 24 inches. So this is 72 inches long. I'm gonna draw one here at 24 inches and one here at 48 inches and cut the foam to three pieces here so that it's easier to store because this thing is kind of a, a pain to store and to transport. Okay, those were much cleaner cuts. What I did was just kind of saw it normally, like you normally would, and that worked much better than trying to kind of drag it back across. Maybe it's just the knife I'm using. Your mileage may vary, but uh, maybe try it on a scrap piece of the foam first, or a piece you won't be using. And I didn't film it, but I actually re-measured this cut before I cut it. Gave myself an extra two inches, so now it's 22 inches wide. And so that's half of the 44 inches that the back, uh, the back area of my car has. So now the plan is to make kind of a fitted sheet, or rather a tube, a sleeve, for these three pieces to fit in. And so I have the, the sheet right here. I'm going to take some measurements and then basically just uh, fold the sheet to where it'll fit and then cut it to size and then sew it. You could cut off the excess fabric here and at this end. I don't think I'm going to bother. I think I'm just going to pin it along this edge, pin it along that edge, and sew along the pins. Okay, so now we have a tube, kind of a sock thing that we can put over the mattress. So let's try it and give it a shot. I'm not 100% convinced that chopping this up into thirds here and here was the best idea. I'm pretty sure it'll be okay, but um, it might come apart while I'm on it and be uncomfortable while I'm sleeping and there might be gaps that form while I'm sleeping. We'll see. I'm gonna go try this out in, uh, in a few days, sometime this week. I could finish up this end. I could close off this end with Velcro or button snaps or something like that, but I think just folding it over and tucking it under is gonna work just fine. And when I want to store this, I can just pull the pieces apart from each other, leave a few inches of a gap, and then kind of fold it like a Z. Let me see if I can do that now. So like I said, let me give this a try. Let me try it out up, uh, up in the mountains in my car and I will update you further on in this video. So a little bit of time has passed now and I've used the foam camp mattress for I think eight nights. And my wife has also used it a couple of nights on trips that we've gone on and uh, it's great. We both really like it, much better than any inflatable mattress I've used. And it's only $20. Uh, for me, it's a no-brainer. So I would highly recommend it. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.